the magnificent Pacific coast of California. We look at Monterey, Carmel, the playground of the wealthy. Today, we move inland over the majestic hills into the internationally known Laguna Seca. Hello, I'm Dan Scahill. Over my shoulder, thousands of spectators are getting ready to watch the world's fastest sports cars as they blaze around this road course. With us today in the pit area is one of America's greatest racing heroes, Mr. Dan Gurney. Hello, I'm Dan Gurney. Our broadcast team this weekend plans to bring you this race from many different angles, hopefully some that you've never experienced before. For the first time during a road race, you'll actually be riding in the car driven by this man, Patrick Gayard of Paris, France. The camera mounted on the Sony Can-Am car will serve as your eyes as you sit on the driver's shoulder in the race. It's the second to last race of the season. Therefore, the points race has narrowed down to where only three people can possibly win it. Those are Jackie Ix, Elliot Forbes Robinson, and Keke Rosberg. Elliot Forbes Robinson from La Crescenta, California, driving the Budweiser Spider, owned by another excellent racing driver, Paul Newman. Jackie Ix from Brussels, Belgium, the most experienced driver in the race. His 15-year career includes nine Grand Prix victories and four wins at the Le Mans 24-hour race. Now today, Keke will be starting from the back of the field, even though yesterday he was the fastest qualifier. Let's go back to yesterday and take a look at KK's record-setting qualifying run. KK Rosberg is pushing his Budweiser Spider right to the limit, literally throwing this car around the racetrack. Up the uphill he goes, runs into the speed bumps, almost clipping the armco barrier at the right-hand side of his car. Rosberg breaking hard, flying down through the corkscrew, down around, hailing this awesome race machine. Puts the wheel to the dirt, using every inch of this racetrack to gain maximum speed. Again, Rosberg puts the wheel off the track as he closes in on slower traffic. K.K. Rosberg all the way off the track as he runs up over the top of Tim Evans. K.K. Rosberg. And suddenly, at turn two, the fastest part of the circuit, disaster struck. Something broke. The car hit the outside barrier and careened across the track, scattering wreckage everywhere. Later, I spoke with K.K. I'm sitting with K.K. Rosberg, who not only is the fastest qualifier for the race, but about an hour ago, he had a monumental shunt over on turn two, and he's kind enough to discuss it with us, although I know he's very sore. KK, can you, can you explain what happened? Uh, well, the car went straight on. The wall is so close there that when you're doing about 160 miles an hour, you don't really have time to react on it. Quite all of a sudden, you realize that you become from a driver to a passenger, and, and that's it. And that's about all I can say at the moment. I was very, I think I was a bit lucky to escape from that shunt like, like I did. It's five minutes to race time. Jackie Ick squeezing into his Lola. This race is a must for him. Only seven points separate he and Elliot Forbes Robinson in the championship points race. The cars, 550 horsepower, 1,600 pounds. The rules say you must qualify the car and not the driver. For this reason, K.K. Rosberg, yesterday's fastest qualifier, starts the race dead last. K.K. Rosberg entering his Budweiser Spider. The cars are on the grid. Behind the Datsun 280Z pace car, 25 of the world's best drivers. 14,000 horsepower waiting to be let loose. The Laguna Seca Can-Am race is about to get underway. The field pulls out for one pace lap. We have a report that K.K. Rosberg hasn't started yet. We understand that K.K. is having some difficulty. Let's go down the Dan Gurney pit wall. As you can see, it took a little longer than you got K.K car because he's in a lot of pain but it certainly hasn't hurt his enthusiasm how does a driver prove himself good enough to get a ride in a sixty thousand dollar can-am race car how does he do it by proving himself right here this is formula ford racing that took place earlier today one of several classes of racing that serve as a training ground for young drivers the competition is fast and furious but if you're good you've got to make it in this style of racing passing maneuvering working your way around laguna Seca. leaders have problems like this car right here sliding off the course slamming into a competitor and hitting the wall like we said earlier the competition is fast and furious but if you're good enough you end up right here in the seat of a can am race car the goodyear tires that these cars run on are designed to give maximum adhesion at high temperatures reached during racing the weaving you see the cars doing is warming up the tires
Bobby Ray Hall, the pole sitter from Illinois, driving the black Ampex Prophet. Next to him, Elliot Forbes Robinson, better known as EFR and the Budweiser Spider. Followed by Jeff Brabham, Jeff Lees, Howdy Holmes, Jackie Ix, John Morton, Bert Chopin, Randy Lewis, and Bobby Brown. In the sixth row, the Sony camera car with Patrick Gayard as we come in the last turn, preparing for a start. Green flag is out. Look at this. Pole sitter Bobby Rahal is caught napping. And Elliot Forbes Robinson and Jeff Lees get by him in the turn number one going to the lead. In the turn two with Patrick Gayard. 160 miles per hour, 235 feet for every heartbeat. The leaders. Elliot Forbes Robinson, then Jeff Lees, followed closely by Bobby Rahal. Up the hill towards the corkscrew. Patrick Gayard looking for a way around Bobby Brown. Back into our Sony car. EFR, the leader, breaking for the corkscrew. The car gets light here as he crests the rise and then drops down into this difficult turn. Patrick Gayard shifting down for the corkscrew. Fourth, third, he breaks late, stuffs his car inside of Bobby Brown. These cars weigh as much as a small imported car, but have 10 times the horsepower. In the turn nine, the last and slowest corner on the track as we get ready to complete the first lap. Elliot Forbes Robinson, the young man right here, Jeff Lees, the Englishman. Then Ray Hall, Brabham, Ix, Holmes, Morton, Chopin, Lewis, Gayard, and Brown. Elliot Forbes Robinson is under a lot of pressure here. He needs as many points as possible to stay in the hunt for the championship, and he must stay ahead of Jackie Ix in the number one Lola. But it's Elliot Forbes Robinson in the lead. Jeff Lee's running second, Bobby Rahal running third, and Jeff Brabham running fourth. The leader, second, third, fourth, and fifth place, making the way around that hill in Laguna Seca. We have a battle for ninth place between Patrick Gayard and Randy Lewis, up the uphill towards the corkscrew. This is where Gayard passed Brown the last lap. Again, Gayard breaks way late and sneaks by on the inside. What an excellent view from our race vision camera mounted inside the Sony number 98 car. Here's the leader, Elliot Forbes Robinson, but Bobby Rahal tries the same trick on Jeff Lees, breaking for turn number nine. Lees shuts the door on him. Rahal taps Lees, left fender, parts are coming off. We'll be back to more racing action right after this. Elliot Forbes Robinson still holding on to a slim lead, but we have a real battle for second. Jeff Lees in the number two VDS car and Bobby Rahal in the Ampex Profit. Lees has lost a piece of fiberglass from the rear end of his car with that earlier tap with Rahal, but it doesn't seem to have slowed him down. Rahal is trying desperately to get around. Here's Jeff Lees, his car virtually logo free, no riding at all, due to the fact that it's owned by Dutch brewery magnate Count von der Straten, one of the true patrons of the racing sport for many, many years. Elliot Forbes Robinson, Jeff Lees, Bobby Rahal, first, second, third place, down and around, making their approach to tournament nine. Traffic coming up, breaking for turn nine. Rahal moves to the inside of Lees. We have a massive traffic jam. And Bobby Rahal grabs second place from Jeff Lees. Now the question is, can he catch Elliot Forbes Robinson? The leader, Elliot Forbes Robinson, in position number one. New second place, Bobby Rahal, Jeff Lees. But still within striking distance is Can-Am rookie Jeff Brabham. Jeff Brabham driving the number 10 Anheuser-Busch car. But look at Bobby Rahal, rapidly gaining on Elliot Forbes Robinson as they travel up the hill towards the corkscrew. Set themselves up, breaking hard, pitching that car into the corkscrew. Then on the power, down the hill section they're into right now. Making the way in the turn number seven. And Rahal almost loses it. Bobby Rahal with an amazing save, slides off the track, but manages to keep control of the car. Bobby Rahal hardly losing a foot during that off-track excursion as he catches up right up behind Elliot Forbes Robinson as they make their way in the turn number nine. And then it's off towards the start-finish line. Incredible race action here in Laguna Seca, California. A tremendous battle is developing right here. Elliot Forbes Robinson in the lead. Bobby Rahal in second. Jeff Lees in third. Bobby Rahal coming up. Has Elliot Forbes Robinson right in his gun sights as they make their way through traffic. Rahal tries the inside shot, backs off, builds up a little speed, and takes the inside shot around the left-hand side of Elliot Forbes Robinson, side by side. Bobby Rahal gets around, our new leader here at Laguna Seca. Bobby Rahal, position number one, to the corkscrew. 
Elliott Ford Brothers has fallen back to the second place position, but still back to that third place position, Shepley. Bobby Rahal, the leader, making his way up in the traffic. He gets slowed down. Elliot Forbes Robinson and Jeff Lees are catching up in the turn number nine. The blue flag comes out for the turn marshal, signaling the rest of the cars to pull it aside for the fast competitors. Bobby Rahal easily breezing by traffic, but Elliot Forbes Robinson and Jeff Lees are held up. Ray Hall gets through. Elliot Forbes Robinson, Jeff Lee, second and third place, held up by traffic. Back in the camera car, we overtake a back marker. They really come up fast at these speeds. And KK Rosberg has caught up. Rosberg has overtaken 20 cars in a mad rush to get to the front of the pack. But the next competitor he has to deal with is this car right here. The race vision mounted number 98 Sony car. Patrick Gayard, the Frenchman, competing on this track weaving through traffic, and so is number five, K.K. Rosberg. Two competitors making their way through the corkscrew. Here's Patrick. K.K. Rosberg, not too far behind. Whoa, a little bit out of shape. Again, we go back inside the race vision mounted car. Patrick Gayard working his way around the track here at Laguna Seca, California. Number 98, Patrick Gayard, right behind K.K. Rosberg in the turn number nine. Straightening up from turn number nine, make their mad dash to the start-finish line. Rosberg trying an inside shot. Gayard holding him back. KK trying any line to get around the Frenchman. Side-by-side -side action as KK Rosberg squeezes by at 170 miles per hour. Remember, KK Rosberg qualified fastest car yesterday. KK Rosberg getting by the young Frenchman here at Laguna Seca. And with a status report on the leaders, here's Dan Gurney in the pit area. Bobby Rahal seems to be long gone. He's well in command. Now, Elliott is under, still under a lot of pressure from Jeff Fleece. And Jeff Fleece, in turn, is under a lot of pressure from Jeff Brabham. You're right, Dan Gurney. Jeff Brabham is nearly running under Jeff Lee's tailpipes. They work their way through the corkscrew, kicking up a little bit of dust that's blown out on the course. Elliott Forbes Robinson maneuvering his way. Jeff Lee's. Jeff Brabham right behind. <laughs> Coming down the turn of an eye. Second place, third, fourth, and the rest of the back. But here's the leader, Bobby Rahal, pouring on the call. Forbes Robinson, Jeff Lee, Jeff Bravo. Second, third, fourth position. Incredible racing taking place with these Can Am race machines. Second, third, and fourth place making the way up the uphill. The interesting point in this race now is the number four position. Jeff Brabham in the number 10 Anheuser-Busch car, 22 years of age, his father, three-time world champion, Jack Brabham. Jeff in the number 10 car, his first Can-Am race here at Laguna Seca. Another man to watch out for. The number one X car coming around through the turn, Jackie X right behind him, applying the pressure, Howdy Holmes and the Budweiser Spider. X Holmes through turn number nine, making their way to the start-finish line. EFR desperately needs to hold on to second place because Jackie X is closing fast. Jackie, in turn, is under tremendous pressure from Howdy Holmes. X must catch EFR. This up, oh, Jeff Bradham gets around Jeff Lees. The rookie, Jeff Bradham, has gotten around Jeff Lees in the third position. Incredible pass through the corkscrew. Elliot Forbes Robinson, Jeff Brabham, Jeff Lees, a lapped car. Let's see how far Jackie X, there's Jackie X, followed by Howdy Holmes. Brabham is slowing down. Jeff Brabham is pulling to the pits. What a break for Jeff Lees, who moves back into third place. X moves up to fourth now, with Howdy Holmes in the fifth place position. X, new turn number nine. Out through nine to the start finish line. We'll be back right after this. We continue at Laguna Seca, California. Elliot Forbes Robinson in second place. Coming up on slow traffic, slows down, he's blocked. Jeff Lees in third place, comes up right up behind him. On the uphill swing, second and third place, dealing with the traffic here at Laguna Seca. Elliot Forbes Robinson, working his way past traffic, also dealing with the corkscrew. Jeff Lees is forced 
way behind by that slow competitor in between second and third place. Here's Elliot Forbes Robinson. Earlier today, Dan Gurney had a chance to talk with Howdy Holmes, who was hired recently to do exactly what he's doing here, to put pressure on Jackie Ickes. Well, I uh, am the fourth member on the Budweiser team, and uh, they called last week uh, in an effort that uh, I might be able to take some points away from some other people in the series because I'm not in the hunt for the championship points. Sure. I think I know I can take points away from somebody else, and that's why I'm here, and, uh, and uh, we'll just have to see. But here's the man right here. The leader, Bobby Rahal, still pouring it on, even though he has a very strong lead. Whoop, not slacking a bit, he runs off the course, making his approach to Tournament 9. The Ampex car, through Tournament 9, position number one, down across the start-finish line. EFR still being pressured by Jeff Lees. They, too, slide down the Tournament 9. Second and third place, through Tournament 9, down to the start-finish line. Elliot Forbes Robinson across the start finish line, second place. Jeff Lees in the third place position. Here is the battle. Second and third. Ray Hall way out the lead, but you can see the gap between EFR and Jeff Lees. Coming up with slow traffic. EFR has slowed down again, looking for a way around, but there's nothing to do but slow down. Again, Jeff Lees gets around the slow traffic, tailing second place. Laguna Seca is famous for its traffic situation. Often a driver will see a hard-fought lead of a few car lengths disappear due to a bad break in traffic. It's a very important part of being a good driver not to let this disrupt your concentration. You cannot allow this frustration to make you take foolish chances. Down in the turn number nine, Hicks and Holmes are running at a blistering pace and have nearly caught Jeff Lees and Elliott Forbes Robinson. Across the start-finish line, in the turn number one, here's Jeff Lees. Back in the pack, Ix and Holmes dicing it out. Elliot Forbes Robinson, in the second-place position. Behind him, third place, Jeff Lees. The back markers holding off Jackie Ix and Hadi Holmes. Let's take a look at the separation between second place and the rest of our top contenders. From the top of the hill, Second place, Elliot Forbes Robinson, followed by third, Jeff Lees. Second and third, getting down through the corkscrew. Fourth place coming about, Jackie Hicks. And the fifth place position will be coming around. Howdy Holmes, the Budweiser Spider. Sixth place, John Morton. And in seventh place, K.K. Rosberg. K.K. Rosberg has caught up the leaders. We'll be right back. Jackie Hicks has run off the track. He's torn a hole in the front of his city corp, Lola. Hicks has been under tremendous pressure from Howdy Holmes. The City Corp Lola, Jackie Ix entering the pits. The big question now is can KK catch the leader? He's come all the way from the back of the pack to catch up, but he's got to get around John Morton. Here's more. KK trying to get around. John Morton doing a fine job of driving, holding off. KK Rosberg trying to get around the inside shot. KK Rosberg driving off the course, trying to get around John Morton. Morton leading K.K. Rosberg into the corkscrew. Again, slow traffic. Morton down on the corkscrew. K.K. takes the inside shot. Smoke! There's smoke coming out of K.K. Rosberg's car. John Morton leading K.K. down. There is smoke coming from the back of K.K. Rosberg's car. Morton. K.K. Rosberg in the turn number nine. Let's look at the back of uh, K.K. Rosberg's car. There is smoke pouring from the rear tire. Jackie Ix. The City Corp car pulling back out on the course. The championship picture has really changed with that unscheduled pit stop by Jackie Hicks. Even though he was only in the pits for less than a minute, Elliot did get a lap on him and so did KK Roseburg. But meanwhile, second place, Elliot Forbes Robinson. What's happened to Jeff Lees? Continually throughout this race, Jeff Lees has been applying the pressure to this man right here. Jeff Lees is not there. Elliot Forbes Robinson in second place, untouched, unpressured by Jeff Lees. Continuing around the course, here's Elliot Forbes Robinson. There's Jeff Lees. Look at the distance. Dan Gurney in the pit lane with a report. Elliot has shaken off that tremendous pressure by Jeff Lees. Jeff appears to be having a little bit of difficulty with his gearbox. K.K. Rosberg has gotten around John Morton. 
all the way from the back of the field, moving up into the top position. But does K.K. Rosberg have enough time in the few laps remaining to catch the leaders? He is literally flying around this course, through the corkscrew. Precious laps remaining. K.K. Rosberg spins off the course. Here comes Morton. John Morton gets by K.K. K.K. puts it in gear, spins it around. Here comes X. X gets by. KK falls in behind X, is back in the race. What an incredible spin for KK Rosberg. X, Norton getting by. Here's second place, Elliot Forbes Robinson. Again, dealing with slow traffic, makes his way across the start finish line. There's only a matter of a few laps remaining in this race. He still holds that second place. Elliot Forbes Robinson. All he wants to do now is contend with that slow traffic and finish in a precious second place. But here's the leader, Bobby Rahal, on the final lap. And the racers say the last lap is the longest. He's hoping that that car that's performed so well simply holds together on these last precious seconds. Coming up on slow traffic, the leader, Bobby Rahal, in the turn number nine. The checkered flag being prepared. It's the mad dash for the checkered flag. Bobby Rahal across the start finish line. Checkered flag takes the win here at Laguna Seca. Second place, Elliot Forbes Robinson. Third, Jeff Lees. Howdy Holmes in fourth. John Morton fifth. And a sore and tired KK Rosberg in sixth place. It has been quite a race day here at Laguna Seca, California. Bobby Rahal, victorious, taking that Can Am machine in the victory circle. Dan Gurney, how about your viewpoint? I've got to make my way down to that winner. Well, folks, there it is. Bobby Rahal and his crew with the Prophet did a flawless job. Once he managed to get to the front after that scuffle with Jeff Lees and Elliot Forbes Robinson, he was long gone. Now here's Dan Scahill in Victory Circle. What about the winner's viewpoint? Hot. Uh, <coughs> we were lucky we got a break in traffic and we got past Elliot. And then I was just using traffic to every advantage I could. And uh, we had to save the tires. The brakes started to go away about a quarter of the way through, so I had to baby the brakes and the tires. And as long as I could keep about 15 seconds up on whoever finished second, Elliot, I guess, then I was happy and uh, greatest day of my life.